Hi guys, Kalara Hudson here of While They Play Designs, and today I'm just going to be talking to you about chart diagrams. Really, it's a great way to do crochet patterns. I've actually come to love working off of charts because really, essentially, you have all of the stitches laid out in front of you. You know how they're going to lay, how they're going to look. It kind of makes more sense in your head as long as you understand the stitches that are on the paper. That's when it can really get hard. So if you go to yarnstandards.com, they actually have the crochet chart symbols right there for you with clear instructions describing each stitch and what it is and what the diagram is for it. Because you can look at a chart and it might look like a double, maybe a triple, you're really not sure. You can always reference this little chart symbol key. On this one, I'll just go over some of the basics. We have a chain and if you look, I have a sample here of a chart. These are all of our little chains, just little ovals. And then every time you see a solid dot, that's going to be a slip stitch. And usually on charts, you're either going to see an X or a plus sign, and that's always going to be a single crochet. And then you have your little T shape that's a half double crochet. And then you'll have a T with a little line through it, just one line, that's going to be a double crochet. And just as a little way to remind yourself, the way I remember that this is a double, is we have a line at the top and a line through the middle, so double. Then for our treble crochet or our triple crochet, we've got one, two, three. Double treble or quadruple crochet is one, two, three, four. So that's a T with three little dashes through it. And then of course we've got little decrease stitches. We have some clusters and popcorn and puff stitches and bobble stitches, but there's really a lot you can do in the diagrams. And if you're ever confused on how to do it, this is a great resource to go to, to just look up all of these different symbols and what they mean and how to do them. So I'll go ahead and walk you guys through how to read a chart. This one is actually just a flat piece of work. And when you're working a chart from right to left and then chaining and turning your work, it can get a little difficult to read that chart pattern. In fact, when I first started working off of these, it really threw me for a loop when I got to the end of my right side row, it was time to turn my work and work on the wrong side. So if you'll take a look on this pattern, you've done your foundation chain, and here's your turning chain, and then it tells you to one, two, three, four, five double crochet into that chain, and then chain two, skip three chains, and then we have a single crochet into that next chain. And essentially you're repeating that turning chain, the, the chain two, five double crochet in the next chain, and you'll always be able to look here. After I worked this single crochet into this chain, I have one, two, three chains. So you're skipping three chains before doing your next set of stitches. So when you get to the end of row one, this is where row two starts. And I found a pretty great way to keep track of your wrong side rows. What you can do is the chart that you have access to, if you print it on a piece of clear projector paper or I found some vellum at Staples, you can print your chart on that and once you've finished your right side row, once you're ready to start your wrong side, you're always working right to left of course in crochet, so what you can do is just simply flip this piece of vellum over and now you can see our wrong side row that was reading left to right on the front of our chart is now reading right to left. So this is just a great way to kind of help you as you're learning the basics of reading off of charts. This will help you kind of wrap your head around how it works. But you'll flip back over to your right side again, of course, which is row three, and you'll work right to left again. Row four, you'll just flip over, work right to left, and that might help you a little better to wrap your head around those stitches. But really, reading from a chart is, is great because you can essentially take a look at what your finish item is gonna look like. You know exactly what your stitches are going to create, what shapes are gonna come alive when your stitches go together. So charts are really great for that, but every time you see a chart, especially in patterns written in the US, you're always gonna see a stitch key. And the stitch key, of course, is going to give you those crochet chart symbols. And it should lay it all out there for you, easy to see, 
So basically that's how you work off of a chart when you're working flat. So next I'm going to be showing you how to work in the round, how to read that chart and better understand it. So for this one, I've printed out just uh, the symbol granny square that we did earlier. And this little diagram here is simply a magic circle, which I've shown you before. Sometimes you'll see a series of chains and then a slip stitch diagram. And that just means that's how they want you to form your circle. But for this one, this is our magic circle to start off our diagram. And then you'll notice right off the bat, out of that starting circle, we have a chain three. And then we're going to work our double crochet. We're going to work two of them in the center, chain three. Do three more into the circle, chain three. And then we're going to repeat that all the way around. Now when we get to the beginning of this round, we see that little black dot. And remember when you look on the crochet chart symbol, that's a slip stitch. So that's going to join that first round. And the way you want to read a chart that is written in the round is exactly how you would crochet it. You're going to go from right to left, counterclockwise. So you're going to read it just like you would be crocheting it. So when you're done with that slip stitch, you're going to, as we did with our granny square, we found another corner, we chained three, and we worked our stitches all the way around to the end of that round where we slip stitched. So we finished the second round, and then of course we would just flip it, join our yarn for the next round, and continue on just as we did before. And you will notice when you are reading off of a chart that's worked in the round, like this one, your rows are going to alter in color. And for this one, we're just altering every other color. That just kind of helps you keep your way when you're crocheting it. You know, well, I did a black row last time, so I'm going to do a blue row now. And sometimes they'll be in completely different colors that are color-coded with the colors that you're using for your pattern. But essentially, that's how you work in the round. And I just wanted to show you guys this little breakdown of just some of the basic stitches really that you're going to be using. And it's just kind of a way to make better sense of why the stitches look the way they do on the chart because really the first time you look at a chart, it doesn't really make much sense as to why they look the way they do. So on this little diagram that I printed out, we have our single crochet here as our first stitch. And kind of a little clue for me when I'm reading these charts, when I see the X, instead of a single crochet, just to kind of remind myself, I think of it as you're not doing a yarn over before you start your stitch, which you don't do with a single crochet. But for the half double crochet, how I look at it is this top of this T is your first yarn over, and then you're gonna be pulling through your yarn. So that's our half double. On our double crochet, which is one, two, the horizontal bars, you're gonna be yarning over your hook, and then you're gonna be pulling through two, one time and then pulling through two a second time. So that kind of helps me remember that that's a double crochet. For your treble crochet or triple crochet, again, yarn over and then you're going to pull through two once and then a second time and then finally a third time and that's your triple crochet. And finally on your double treble or your quadruple crochet, same exact thing. Yarn over your hook and then you're going to be pulling through two once, twice, three times, and then finally four times. So that's your quadruple crochet. So really, once you've wrapped your head around why these diagrams and symbols look the way they do, it kind of makes a little more sense when you're going back to, say, the chart, and you're trying to wrap your head around why they look funny. It just makes more sense to know that really they do kind of make sense alongside the stitches. That's just a better way to describe to you how to better read these stitches when you're following an actual chart diagram. So I hope that helps you guys.